So let's talk about parallel structure, which in the context of a sentence means that a number of things are running parallel. And the word parallel, of course, refers to things that are sort of along the same track. So two lines that are going the same direction, but will never meet. Of course, if you're looking at something like train tracks, for instance, then eventually it looks like they come together in the distance, but we know that that's an optical illusion. All right, so as we think about parallel structure then, if you look at this example, it reads, I love to hunt, but I don't like to fish. And if we look at these together, they have a lot in common, these two clauses here. So we have a coordinating conjunction, and we know that coordinating conjunctions often tie together two equal elements. So parallel structure can be very useful for making these clauses the same. In the first one, we have I is the subject, then we have love is the verb, and we have an infinitive in to hunt. So if you remember, the infinitive is to plus the verb. If you look at the second part now, we again have a subject in I. It's kind of hiding there a little bit. Then we have like is our verb, and we're just going to skip do not. Do is the helping verb and not is the adverb. And then we have again an infinitive at the end. So we have to fish at the end. Okay, now you can see that these two patterns here are exactly the same. But we could write it differently. So we could write, I love to hunt, but I don't like fishing. And fishing, our H went missing there. Fishing is a present participle. So fishing is a present participle, it ends in ing. And the sentence would be completely grammatical yet if we ended with fishing, but it's not quite as elegant. So the thing with parallel structure is that if you don't use it, you're not necessarily making a grammatical mistake, but often you can use parallel structure to make things just a little bit more stylish. Let's look at a few more examples just to get the hang of this. And each one is unique. So uh, when you look for parallel structure in sentences, there's no easy way to kind of solve every single problem. Uh, you just have to be aware of this issue. And then when you come across different kind of cases, you're going to be prepared for them. So number one here, I'm taking an English course because I find the subject both compelling and it challenges me. This one follows our last pattern somewhat. So this one says both compelling. And you can see here that because we have this and, we want these things to be somewhat similar. So both this and, in this case, challenging. So let's make, make them both present participles. Both will end in ing. Oh, our g's are going missing here. Uh, so with the ing ending, then they're both uh, parallel. And you can see that often parallelism comes comes in when you're dealing with these kind of correlative conjunctions or coordinating conjunctions, conjunctions that are tying things together. And then we want to make them the same. We also have this with lists. So in this case, we have, I usually bring a chocolate bar, item number one, five pencils, number two, um, eraser, three, and a pen. You can hear that sounds kind of awkward already. But the problem is that with some of these items, we have an article. So a uh, is the article. The is also an article, but we're not using that one here. So a chocolate bar. Now, we wouldn't say fi a five pencils. So with the plural, we don't typically use a. But then we don't have an eraser. So we want an un in there. But we do have and a pen. And the trick then is that if you have a list and you're adding articles or even prepositions, it can be different things as well, um, you have to be consistent. So try to use all articles or none, all prepositions or none. And that'll make it nice and stylish. Next one, who doesn't like to correct sentences on parallel structure and an array of other grammatical topics? So in this case, we have this little preposition on here. And you can see that, again, we have and, which is connecting two things. So we have sentences, and then we get two things. So on parallel structure, that's our first thing, number one. And now we have the second thing. And notice we have a noun, an array, but we don't have that preposition. There's no preposition after and. So if we wanted to be hypercorrect here, we would stick on here as well, just to make them parallel. And the trick then is to figure out where does this kind of 
comparison start. So if if we say correct sentences, and then we get you know some information about this, we get two kinds of options. Then we can check at the beginning of each option if there you know if it starts with a preposition, let's say, and then if after our and the same thing is happening. Okay, so that's a fairly minor kind of omission of a word, uh, not a huge deal, but again something to watch out for. Let's finish with two final examples. And the first one reads here, Sebastian was sad that someone had wrecked his Lego house and no one would claim responsibility for this act of terrorism. All right, kind of dramatic there. Now we have again a comparison. So we have and here. And if we look on either side of the comparison, we see Sebastian was sad. So that's our first little bit here. And then it says that, that's kind of item number one that someone had wrecked his Lego house and no one would claim responsibility for this act of terrorism. If you look at the beginning of each of these, this one starts with a relative pronoun, that, which introduces a dependent clause. This one is missing that. And so if we put that in, it just reads a little bit more smoothly, that someone has wrecked his Lego and that no one would claim responsibility. Again, look for that comparison and then see if you can make them parallel. One final example to look at, and this is one that often happens in bureaucratic writing. So this one reads, our department has three objectives. Then we have some kind of silly objectives here. Um, and if you use bullets, it's easy to forget about parallelism. So try to make your bullets um, kind of the same if you can. The first one here starts with improve. So that's a verb here. Um, and then the second one, reducing, which is a present participle, ends in ing. And the last one does not start with a verb at all. We just want better team spirit. So it's best if we can make them all the same. And it's up to you how you want to do that. In this case, if you start with improve, maybe you could say improve efficiency, reduce overtime hours, and create team spirit. So use the verb create at the end. All right, that's it for parallel structure. Hope you found this useful. Uh, and don't overdo it. If you have a very short sentence, then you can often just um, slack off a little bit, and that's fine.